Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello from my side. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see the the mouse pointer? Yep. I'll yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, okay. Uh, so I will present uh, Materials Cloud and Aida Lab. So uh, wait, I cannot. Ah, okay, it works. Uh, so just to reiterate or continue where Marnik left off. So this is our open science platform. Also, Marnik gave an overview of this. So Marnik discussed this um, AIDA. So the automation infrastructure. And I will discuss now our two web platforms. So Materials Cloud, so which is a platform for seamlessly sharing data and resources in, in, in computational material science. And then AIDA Lab. Uh, which is a web platform for running uh, AIDA workflows or HVC workflows via the browser with user-friendly interfaces. Uh, so let me start with Materials Cloud. It, con it consists of five different sections, learn, work, discover, explore, archive. I will go into detail of each of these sections, but uh, first I want to make an analogy. So how is one way of thinking about AIDA and Materials Cloud and, and what is our vision for Materials Cloud. So I want to make an analogy with Git. So AIDA is like the engine, uh, like Git. So Git stores your source code on your local computer. So everybody, every user has a source code on their computer. And AIDA is similar. So AIDA, with AIDA, you have your graph database, your material science calculations on your local computer. And then Materials Cloud is like GitHub. So you can upload your data. So with, with Git, you upload your source code. With uh, AIDA, you upload your uh, your graph database, material science calculations on Materials Cloud, and then other people can uh, download it, can import into their local AIDA environment, and then potentially add to, to the data. But Materials Cloud is more. So it's also a cloud computing and data generation platform. So this is this work section. But I, I first uh, want to start with, with this data dissemination part of, of Materials Cloud. So this is uh, the three, uh, so this pertains to three sections, archive, discover, and explore. I want to start with archive. So archive, uh, so you can access with this you know, on this URL archive. So basically what it is, is an open research data repository. So here is the web page when you access it. And all uh, researchers can upload their research data uh, to this web page, to this system. And then basically you will get records uh, in the archive. And what you have is a DOI, so it's citable. And, um, and so it's also indexed by, by many search engines. And I want to go into detail of this archive uh, based on the example that Marnik gave. So this uh, MC3D, so this Materials Cloud three-dimensional crystal database. So this was calculated with AIDA, as Marnik described with, with, with the workflows. Uh, and so here is the archive entry of, of, of the MC3D. And what are the important points here? So there is the DOI. You will have files so that uh, you can kind of upload directly the, uh, the raw files of, 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 of your calculations. Uh, so that's one thing, but then, uh, Select so the so the researchers can also um, uh, build uh, a materials called discover and an explore page. So I will discuss this further, but these are really uh, the way to make your data adhere to this pair standard that is uh, that is really sought in 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 this field. And so I will uh, I will take this example. So this MC three D example, and I want to demonstrate. So this is just the archive page. So directly the the files uploaded. I want to demonstrate the discover page, and also the explore page. So first let's start with the discover page. So you will have for the MC three D uh, materials cloud three dimensional database. You will have an interface to explore all the materials. You can filter based on uh, a periodic table to find the material that you want. And then for every material, you can select the material and you can find properties for it. For example, the structure uh, and some properties. Uh, for example, here is the total energy. And, and, and for every calculated property that was calculated with the AIDA uh, workflow engine, uh, there will be a link, a small link, which you can click to really find out how 
a property was calculated. So for example, if you click on, on this link for the total energy, you will jump to the explore page. And the explore page is a way to explore the underlying AIDA database, the AIDA graph database. So you will have the nodes in, in, the, in the database. And here we clicked on the total energy calculation. So you can really see what are the input scripts, output scripts of this total energy uh, calculation. So for example, here, you can open, uh, for example, the, the quantum espresso input script. Uh, but this, so this was just one uh, discover section. So Matthias Cloud contains many other discover sections. Another one I want to very briefly mention is this standard solid state pseudopotentials uh, discover section, which basically is a, so this is just a, so this is a collection uh, of pseudopotentials. So for every element you have, uh, you have detailed benchmarking based on some source pseudo pseudopotentials and the best uh, so the potential library is chosen for every element. So in this interface, you can click on every element and you will see the detailed benchmarking results. So you can go, you can go uh, to see this uh, discover section of materials cloud. Okay, so this was for data dissemination. So the next thing I want to discuss is the material cloud work section. So this is mainly um, a section for data generation and cloud computing. I want to start with uh, the tools section of, of, of the work section. So this basically contains uh, web-based applications which can run simple uh, or uh, simulations, data processing, visualization within a few seconds in, the, in your web browser. Uh, and here's just a list uh, of, of the tools I show here. So very popular ones are Quantum Espresso Input Generation, SeekPath. There's also machine learning um, accelerated app, apps and so I encourage you to really play. So these are really easy to start and, and play with. The next part of the work section is quantum mobile. So most of you are probably familiar with this. So this is a, a downloadable, downloadable virtual machine image with AIDA and, and many um, software uh, codes installed. It's ideal for education, like tutorials like this one. Uh, and the last part of the work section is AIDA lab that I will now go into a bit more detail in the next slides. Uh, so a very basic overview, uh, a sentence of AIDA Lab is, is, is the following. So web platform for running AIDA workflows uh, via user-friendly interfaces in the browser. Uh, so here is a very, very simple sketch uh, of, of an AIDA Lab server and kind of the central concept in AIDA Lab are apps. So they so so the idea is very simple that you have an AIDA workflow, a robust AIDA workflow, so similar to what Marnik uh, described, uh, and then a Jupyter notebook based graphical user interfaces to run these workflows and to analyze their results. And then these apps are hosted in the AIDA lab server, which also is running an AIDA instance. And so the AIDA instance is running these workflows and communicating with the HPC. And all of this is hosted on a web page, so users can directly through the browser access their apps. And here's just a very quick overview of the home page of AIDA Lab. So when you log in, you will see, uh, you will see the following. Uh, so every app will have a box on the home page. So here is the Quantum Espresso app. Uh, some graphene nano ribbon app, and then this SSSP app. And, and what's important here is that there's a link to this app store. You click here and you can, you can very easily with one simple, a single click, you can install apps that have been published by the community. So, so uh, if any, anybody comes up with a new idea of an app, you can directly install it from here. And then because this is the Quantum Espresso tutorial, I want to very quickly give an overview of this Quantum Espresso app, uh, how it works. So, so you, you, this is the kind of the start interface. You click on it and you will go into the sub interfaces of this app. And, and what you can do in this app, so the first step, so basically is just is to run Quantum Espresso calculations, which is obvious. But uh, so the first step, what you do is you select uh, a structure, you can upload it. So here I've uploaded the aluminum oxide. You can also select the structure from a kind of a database. Uh, next step is to select uh, what you want to calculate. So if you want to 
relax the structure you want the magnetic calculation you want do you want to calculate band structure or projected density of states and you can also select the protocol so this is what uh, Marnik was also mentioning is that we have uh predefined protocols uh, so k-point grid uh, cutoffs and everything uh, so so you don't the user doesn't have to specify these themselves next you select the code versions and which hvc computer you want to run the calculation on you run it uh, you can while the calculation is running through Ida Lab, you can uh, you can visual, uh, you can somehow uh, check how the calculation is doing. You can you can see the continuously updated output log, and then when the calculation finishes, you will get the results. You can uh, see the band structure in this case and the projected density of states for this uh, aluminum oxide. Uh, okay, so this was Ida Lab, and before I conclude, I want to acknowledge uh, everybody who has contributed so the materials cloud team and AIDA teams uh, and then uh, also the funding agencies and and, and collaborators uh, thank you very much for your attention and I hope you have fun exploring our uh, platforms <laughs>